You know, they've worked it out where there's a lot of activities here at the Clinton Nature Center. Now, for instance, they have the children's play for us, so make sure you bring the kids along with you when you come out. Let them explore the woods. There's always activity going on in the amphitheater. There's the butterfly garden, which is really beautiful during migration season. And then where we are, at the frog pond. Lots of frogs out here. You can come out and take a look at them. I hadn't seen frogs this abundantly since I was a kid. And our last story, we're going to visit with some folks who rehab reptiles. Not frogs, since frogs are amphibians and not reptiles, but turtles at the Central Mississippi Turtle Rescue. Let's drop in and find out what they're up to. There's not a whole lot we wouldn't do for a turtle in need. The first turtle we housed, that was in 2006. It was not long after Luke and I got married. Um, a neighbor happened to find a three-legged box turtle on a pile of brush that he was about to set fire to. And he knew that I, I kind of loved turtles. I'd always collected turtle figurines and whatnot. So he uh, brought the turtle to the house and said, well, here's this three-legged turtle. You need to help it. Not knowing any better at the time, we did, and that's sort of what kicked it all off. This is Mossy, which is a common snapping turtle. She was struck by a car. The whole top of her shell was smashed. So we had our vet put this patch on while the underlying tissue does heal to the point that she can be released. we started caring for these turtles, we really started noticing them. We would see them on the roadways, uh, injured or, you know, having been hit by cars. And so we would always stop and we realized even though they looked dead, they weren't always dead. So we would pick them up and we'd take them home and we'd take them to our vet and we would try to save them. So slowly we started, you know, picking these turtles up and saving them. And then our friends found out that we were kind of experience with saving turtles. So they would bring us turtles that they would find. Our vet would call us and refer other people to us. And it just sort of snowballed from there. And we sort of did it all out of our own pocket. We just, you know, whatever we needed to build, we would just buy. Usually we would wait for tax time to come around and we'd use that tax refund to, you know, to purchase the wood or whatever we needed to, to construct, you know, the various tanks and enclosures. And then, uh, you know, it was proposed that we would become a, a nonprofit uh, organization. So we started investigating the very lengthy, very complicated process of filing for 501c3 uh, nonprofit status. So we are now a full fledged nonprofit turtle rescue. And to my knowledge, we're the only dedicated turtle rescue in Mississippi. We are not open to the public. We are not a sanctuary. We are not a zoo. We are a rehab rescue organization. We bring the turtles in, um, we help them with their injuries or their, their illnesses, and then we get them back out again. So it is a home-based facility. We do this right here on our, on our property. Our ICU ward is inside our home. Uh, all of our uh, enclosures and tanks and uh, fenced-in areas are right here on our property. So we, we can't just have people come and view the turtles here or anything like that, but we are here to help. Um, we're all over the internet, we're on Facebook. Uh, if anyone has or finds a turtle that needs us, we're there. Just give us a call. All right, this is Cavern. Cavern is a river cooter. So as the name suggests, they are native to rivers. They're fast moving current swimmers. We think she was probably hit by a boat propeller. Uh, this area is her lung that you're seeing there in that cavern. Um, and it's completely healed. She is doing great. Cooters are actually one of my favorite species of turtle, just because they're generally very docile. They're easy to handle. These guys, they're just very chill, easy to work with in most cases. I'll stop traffic to grab one out of the road, which I've actually done many times. <laughs> uh, and it only takes a, just a few seconds to move one out of the road, you know? So it's not hurting anyone, and you're, you're saving a life. 
Oh, the Arkansas turtles, man, that was insane. The um, West Memphis Municipal Animal Shelter contacted us. They had been contacted by a gentleman who was out searching for scrap metal. And he came upon a discarded dishwasher uh, behind an Asian restaurant uh, in a, like a strip mall type area. So as he's trying to get it on his truck, he realizes there's something in it. So he opens it up and he finds it's full of this nasty black water and 19 turtles, 19 diamondback terrapins. But they contacted us and we drove up the three hours or so and collected these turtles and brought them home. Of the 19, uh, only 11 remain. They were very sick. They all had uh, fungal infections and respiratory infections. Uh, two had died in the dishwasher. So they were very, very sick turtles. But we've got them here. We treated them all with antibiotics and skin creams for their fungus. And now they're all living in a very nice 700-gallon tank full of brackish water. And they think they're in heaven again. So we're very much looking forward to spring when they'll all be adopted out to educational institutions such as zoos or museums. And they can live a much better life than what they probably have been living for the past year or so. When I was a kid, I always thought, well, they're just very peaceful. They're non-confrontational. They're introverted like me. They can go into their shell and close off from the world. So I've just always had a deep respect for turtles. When that neighbor uh, back in 2006 brought us that, that turtle, I was clueless. I had never housed a turtle before. So I got on the turtle forum and we started doing our research. And, and yeah, we're very much self-taught. We have read and read and read, and we've made some amazing contacts um, across the country, across the globe. There's a lot that humans can do to ensure the survival of these beautiful animals if we just take the time to slow down and watch out for them. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. Down Mississippi.